Time Tamper, Suri White Rock. Suri White Rock! Peter Saran, Suri Panorama. Suri Panorama! Jody Tour, Suri Cloverdale. Suri Cloverdale! Sun Wala, Surrey City Center, from here. Yes, we'll do more about the Sun in a minute. Big Jod Bal Saran, Sastrikal, from Surrey Newton. Surrey Newton! Sain Bosin from Vancouver, Kingsington. Vancouver! Ramji Randawa from Surrey Guildford, and thank you so much for coming. Surrey Guildford. So, does that sound like, does that look like a great bunch of candidates so far? Yeah. Come on, you can do better than that. That's what we're doing. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of people that have always ask me because I was a member of, when I got elected, I was a member of the BC Liberal Party, who have now changed their name this week to the United Party. I'm not sure what they're going to be called next week. Actually, extinct probably next week, but that's another story. <laughs> um, and a lot of people say, Bruce, why did you cross the floor? For those of you that do not know, I come from Abbotsford South. I was the mayor there from 2011 to 2014. And uh, on my re-election attempt, I lost by less than 1%. Uh, 477 votes, not that I've got that memorized. <laughs> but it actually was horrible at the time. But it was actually probably the best thing that ever happened. And here's to the candidates, you don't want to lose by less than 1%. Nope. You don't want to lose because you didn't make that last door knock or didn't make that last phone call. You don't want to lose because you didn't ask for the donation and didn't get it and when it was sitting there ready for you to, for, to ask for. So don't lose by less than 1%. If you're going to lose, get slaughtered. But do not lose by less than 1%. <laughs> but it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. And then I decided to reinvent myself. I was out of politics, actually. I'd done my job. As a mayor, I managed, at, and now this was 2011, this was after the, 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 uh, the Wall Street crash and mortgage, mortgaging uh, scandal. The world got turned upside down. Everybody was worried. And the city, when I got there, wanted to do, I believe it was about a 7% tax increase. And I said, no, 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 no. Now more than ever, we have to tighten our belt. Zero is the target. And we were able to deliver a 0% tax freeze. We did that without laying anybody off. Now, there may have been some people that left or retired that their jobs were not refilled temporarily. We did that without reducing services. And here's how we did it. I didn't do it alone. I had a large part to play in it, but I did not do it alone. And that's why you need a team that is like-minded whenever you do anything. What we did was, is I would go down into the organization and say, okay, for instance, in building permits, it took 11 weeks to get a building permit. And I had contractors complaining, rightfully so. So the first question I asked was, what's our neighbors doing? Our, where are we? Because you need to know where you are in order to make it better. And as sad as it was, we were in the middle of the pack. And I said to them, so we are the industry standard. And they said, yes, sir. I said, well, the standard stinks. It should take two weeks to get a building permit. How do we get to two weeks? And literally, this is what staff did. They kind of looked around and said, N -n 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 nobody's ever asked me that question before. Yeah. I said, well, aren't you the one doing the job? Yes. Yes. So, don't you have an idea or two? And they said, yes, but we get roadblocks. I said, you let me worry about the roadblocks. And what we did is we changed the attitude in City Hall from how to say no to how to say yes. We changed the city, and what happened was, is the interesting thing that happened is, the morale of staff went up, because I believe when you put people in charge, they will do you proud every time. 
and we were able to get it down to three weeks. Did I get my two? No, I got zero for a while, but that's because there was hardly any permits that particular month. We were able to get it down to three weeks. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Rustad over here. <laughs> so now, now that I've finished filling up time because John's here, I'll get to why did I cross the floor? <laughs> I crossed the floor because I was tired of being told to go sit in the corner and be quiet. I believe, and where John and I actually had dinner, what John said to me spoke loud and clear to me. And what happened was, is time and time and time again, I was told, Bruce, that you may be right, but that doesn't fit our agenda to get elected in Vancouver. That's not going to get the votes we want in Vancouver. And so what John said to me was, is look, I expect you as a candidate to bring forward concerns that are unique to your riding. <coughs> that comes first, the party comes second. Now when you put your ex beside someone's name, is that not what you expect is going to happen? Is that not the way it should be? that the, God, the person that you elect has the ability to bring the concerns because to think that Surrey's issues are the same as Vancouver Island or the interior up in Prince George, that they're all gonna be the same, quite frankly, is ridiculous. And in my writing, it's often known as the Bible Belt, it is definitely a city of faith. And they felt as if their concerns were not being heard, especially when it came with regards to what was being said and taught to their children in schools. I would get 500 people plus on any given day that were protesting and say, look, we want to know what you're saying to our children, and we have a right in what's being taught to our children, and we have a right to take our children out of that class. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So, when John and I talked, that particular principle, and John's going to talk about that a little bit, just filled my heart with hope. You then further go, can somebody, so take a look at what's going on. Is healthcare better? No. Right, let me hear that again. Is it better? No. no. Is education any better? No. no. Is the affordability any better? No. Is the housing supply any better? No. Can somebody tell me something that is better? Nothing. I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> Name me one thing. And between 32 years, 32 years, yeah, the tolls are up the bridges. Okay, that'd be about the only thing. So in 32 years, there has been exactly 16 years of liberal leadership and 16 years of NDP. They are both responsible for where we find ourselves right now. Right. And there is one party, and the reason why we are resonating is because we are grassroots, we listen to you, the voters, and we want to put you back in charge and be able to represent what concerns you have, which is exactly what John said he would do. As a matter of fact, John wants all of the candidates to write a pledge to that effect. Does that sound like better change to you? Yes. yes. Does that sound like you actually, your vote matters again? Yes. Absolutely. So, um, I think what I'll do is uh, give a couple of minutes, um, maybe take 30 seconds, I'll go back to each of you. Why did you decide to run for the Conservative Party? And uh, how much money do you need for donations? No, you don't need that. <laughs> Why did you decide to run for the Conservative Party? We'll just go through the room. You can use the mic if you want. Hello. So, as I said, I'm Juan Mirandava. I'm a lawyer by profession. So my practice is in Surrey. The reason for running for the Conservative Party was very clear. It is for Mr. John Rustard. I have absolutely adored and I've absolutely admired the fact that how bold he is. We need a 
statement in the Bible that we have a clear stand and nobody does it better than Mr. Russell. So that is what made me run for conservatives because it is, it is a statement that we are making. It's the future we are defining. It is important how we proceed. We don't want half these statements. We don't want the same that is going on for the last 14 to 15 years. We want change. And that is where the conservative party is actually bringing the change that we need. We need this change. It is, it is about time. Where is the taxpayer money going? We don't see it in the healthcare system necessarily. Emergency, if you have seen it. How poor is it? They proudly stay on the doors, six to eight hours wait time. And then they say, thank you for your cooperation. And if you actually complain about it, they say, okay, make a complain about it, nothing can be really done about it. It was 10 hours yesterday. So, there you go. so there you go. just last weekend, I will just take one second, sorry, I might take a little bit more. A person from my writing, I was door knocking, she's been waiting for two years for a hip replacement. And this woman was about 78 years old, and she was literally crying at the door, and she didn't want to vote. I'm, I'm not going to say she was going to vote for us. She said, I don't have faith in the system. That is the worst than someone deciding to vote. We have been brought to this point where people are losing faith in the system. So it is about high time that Conservative Party needs to, which we are doing, we are stepping up. And we are trying to bring that change. And the reason I joined this movement is because it comes from my heart. It's not just for some ulterior motive. It's simple and clear. I want the problems to be heard. I want all the residents to be heard. I want the Surrey Guilford, my residents, to be heard. They should receive the basic necessities of life for which they're paying the tax on. So that is what the main statement is. And I really thank you. I was, uh, I'm very pleased. So many people showed up. This is beautiful. And uh, any question for me? Or I should pass on the mic to the next person. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So, so yeah, here's what you'll find in politics. You've got to learn to think on your feet. So John came up, for those of you that weren't noting, He's got a radio interview at 2.30, so I think, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I joined the Conservative Party is because of John Rustad. John Rustad has a vision. John Rustad has the passion, and he certainly has the energy, because he's everywhere, absolutely all the time. Oh, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. Would you all agree? Yes. Yes.